Hi, in this example, we will use EMS to study the force acting on the needle due to a magnet that is enclosed inside an aluminum casing. To do this particular example, one needs to do a magnetostatic simulation inside EMS. Now let us see how that is done. Once you create the assembly inside SOLIDWORKS, we can simply go to the EMS tab to start a simulation. To start a simulation, we start by first creating a study. Now EMS has several different study types and the most pertinent study type for this particular situation is the magnetostatic. Why is that so? Because we are using a permanent magnet and we are interested in finding out the force acting on a magnetic material, in this case a magnetic needle. And hence it is sufficient to use magnetostatic simulation. Once you create a study, we need to define the various materials that go into the simulation. For example, the enclosure that is shown here right now is the air enclosure that surrounds the entire model. Now that is defined as air. So to define a material, we just select apply material. EMS comes with its own material database that is fully customizable and you can select predefined materials from this particular database. For example, I've selected air as the enclosure around this particular aluminum casing. Also, there is air region which is within the aluminum casing. From my favorite materials, I can go ahead and select air. Now, the enclosure itself is made of a conducting material like aluminum. So, I'm going to go apply materials. I'm going to select the conductor folder and select aluminum. And finally, the magnet is made of a neodymium type of magnet. So we can go ahead, open the permanent magnets and select N42. And the needle is made of a magnetic material, a steel in this case. So from our selection of steels, we just select an electric steel that is steel 1010. Now once we define the materials, now it's time for us to define the direction of the magnet. What are the north-south directions in the magnet? So to do that, I can select the magnet and apply the coercivity direction. And I select it as y-axis. EMS allows you to take a preview of the direction. So let me go to the front view and zoom in so that the arrow clearly indicates the north-south direction of the magnet. So say OK to apply the direction. And finally, we are interested in computing the force acting on the needle. So we can request the program to compute the force acting on the needle. With this, we are all ready to solve the simulation. To solve the simulation, you right click on study and select run. Now EMS will mesh the component automatically and run the simulation. Once the simulation is completed, EMS attributes some folders where you can look at the simulation results. The first thing that we are interested in finding out is what is the force acting on the needle. And that can be simply picked up from the result table. And you can see here that the force acting on this particular needle, especially the majority of the force is going to be in the y-axis, making the needle go towards the magnet and hence in the positive y-axis. And one can read the force acting on the positive y-axis to be 0.6 newtons. Now this is the force acting on the needle. Next, we can study the magnetic flux vectors on the model. So to do that, I have created a vector plot of the magnetic flux density and you can study the flux lines that are going through the, uh, through the domain here. You can see the flux lines originate in the, mod, in the uh, magnet and then they travel through the air, through the pin and back to the mod, magnet. So I can do various options where I can vary the, the density of the flux lines and also the size of the uh, vectors to see this a little bit more clearly. 
So this helps me to understand the recirculating flux vectors and how they interact with the magnet. Now engineers are seldom happy with the initial design. So what happens when there is a design change? For example, I'm going to make a design change that reflects the size of the magnet. What happens if I make the magnet smaller? Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So to do a design change, it is very simply, I can open up the component in SOLIDWORKS, I can take a look at um, the particular sketch and I can vary the sketch based on uh, the new dimension I have. Imagine I'm just making my magnet a little bit smaller and I want to understand what happens to the force in this under this new magnet. Okay, So here I have uh, updated the model where I have the new magnet and now I'm interested in understanding what is the new force acting on the needle when I change the dimensions of the magnet. So to be able to do that, EMS simply allows you to clone the existing simulation. For example, I can simply drag and drop study 1 and clone it and rename it to study 2. Notice that all the materials that we have applied earlier, they are all intact. Also, the force requested on the needle is also there in our new cloned study. So to be able to re-simulate this study for the new dimension, all we need to do is update the geometry for study 2. That will ensure that the study 2 has the latest geometry information. Notice that even the direction of the magnet is kept intact. So you don't have to redefine any of the previously assigned uh, materials or uh, other boundary conditions. And finally, you can run the simulation by right clicking and selecting run. It is going to mesh the model and run the simulation. Once the simulation is completed, we can now take a look at the new results. Now, the most important thing is I've changed the size of the magnet. Now, what is that going to affect in terms of the force acting on the needle? And I can straight away study that by opening the new force. So it's about 0.53 newtons is the force acting on the needle when I change the dimensions of the magnet. How does it compare with the old one? So I can just go ahead and do the compare studies. And you can see that the old one was about 0.6 newtons and that has reduced slightly a bit to about 0.53 newtons. And as engineers, we can understand this difference and see if that is sufficient enough to attract this needle towards the magnet. And you can take a look at the new flux density which corresponds to this new uh, geometry or the new size of the magnet. Again, there is not much of a noticeable difference in the flux density because obviously the flux originated the uh, north pole of the magnet and they move towards the south pole and then um, due to the presence of a magnetic uh, needle, uh, a lot of flux gets concentrated close to the needle. So thus we saw how using EMS for SOLIDWORKS, um, one can actually um, understand the force acting on a magnetic material due to a permanent magnet. We have also seen how one can do a design change, basically change the geometry and EMS automatically takes care of solving the new geometry and allows you to easily compare the results between the old geometry and the new geometry. Thank you very much for watching this video.